Okay, welcome back to my part two of my tutorial. This part will be the 3ds Max part. And after you've exported your footage, your solve and buju, go into your folder, and all you need to do, just drag it into 3ds Max. There we go. And as you can see, this is what happens when you scale it. It's bigger and narrows thing. And first few things you need to do: uh, right-click perspective and Show safe frames. This is just to make sure you're in the right view. Uh, left click it, go to cameras, camera one, and now you're in the view of the camera in the scene as you can see. And this is where your text will be right there. And next thing is go to views, viewport, background, show background. And this will show you each frame of wherever your thing is. So you can see it's lined up perfectly. Like that little ball, there's a track point. Okay, so next thing you want to do, you can either stay in the viewport or go out, eat your choice, is add some text because that's what this tutorial is about. Or your own custom shape if you have one. Hopefully that's better. So click text and drag that out. And I'm just going to scroll down here and now I'll type in the Buju. No, Buju is weird. Um, track. It's actually called Match Moving in Buju, but we'll call it Track just in case, just, just because. And make it a little interesting to look at. And I'll actually, I might actually keep this on the floor. If you want to rotate it, click Rotate and click angle snap and it'll just make angle it by five degrees so you can get a perfect 90 and I'll go with the uh, upward text just for the sake of the tutorial so next thing you want to do is I'm going to restore my viewport and as you can see it's perfectly flat already and I'm going to go back and scroll scrub through this make sure it looks good and looks like it's already on the ground and now go into your editor tab. I'm assuming you already know the gist of 3ds Max and you know how to handle and stuff so and just adjust the bevel settings and looks good and I'll add a little extra bevel. Let's give a little edge. I just love that little edge that it gives so if you render this out that is our text, and it looks pretty nice. So, next up is the plane. So, go back in here, go into your standard objects, go to plane. I'm just going to find a better spot, plane, and drag it. And just make it bigger. 5,000 by 5,000 will be more than big, but. You're not actually going to see it overlapping or anything. The first thing you're going to do to this plane is hit M to bring materials, or you can click up here. And on your first material, click Standard, and double click on Matte Shadow, and drag that onto the plane. And basically all that does is it only... Here, I'll redo that. And if you... So I'll make a new one. Matte Shadow Standard, and Matte Shadow, and that's just the same material. All this does is it doesn't actually show the plane, it just shows the shadows, etc. Basically just shadows from our light onto our track text. And the next thing we are going to do is create, what do you guess, a light. So we're going to go to the lights tab, click standard. And target spot, target direct are both good. Um, I'm going to put my viewport in. And... First, you have to find out where your light source is if you want it to look realistic. So I'm going to hide selection, hide selection, and I'm, hide please. I want to hide my text. Damn it. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to hide all these nodes because I don't, I don't want to see them. Oh, no, I can't yet. Okay, hold on. Um, as you can see right here, the shadow is pointing pretty much perfectly straight from the sun's coming from up here, so that's what we're going to do. 
and you can't imitate the shadow with a hard shadow or not. It depends on, you know. But I'm gonna unhide all, and now I'm going to add a light coming from. So if I'm gonna go out of for the camera and go into perspective, and I'm gonna oh shit. I'm just gonna move this. I'm gonna make this smaller for now. This is too big. Uh, five by five. No. Now you can't really see it. It's still there. But I just want to find a spot where I can imitate. Okay, so we need to do the front view, and the light will be coming from over here and down. So we're gonna go and back into our light tab, target direct. Shine it down, baby. Actually, well, actually, I have target direct selected now instead of target spot. I don't want that. I want target spot because I like target spots. And put that into your track. And oh, I'm not in camera yet. Okay, hold on. Camera, camera. So that looks. Now you just gotta move it and adjust it. And the first thing you wanna do is raise that baby. Push it out, make it look like the sun more. And you can see it's not actually showing on the front of our text because it is supposed to be perfect. Okay. There. And actually I'm just going to put it right on our text because it's nice and close. And now you can go back into the modifier panel. Modify and select your light and shadows on and use if you have a good computer you can use area shadows and I'll show you what that looks like I'm gonna go up oh, I gotta find my plane I didn't think about that I'm gonna pause the video I'll be right back when I find my plane okay so I found my plane I'm gonna rescale it and I don't want to make it as big this time just enough so I'm gonna go back into perspective and I like little perspective view and I'm going to make sure shadows are turned on. Go back to my modifier for light. And now I'm going to go to area shadows and I'll show you an example of what that looks like. It's basically the best, but it's by far the longest render time of the simple ones. I think uh, mental ray might be longer or ray trace. No, ray trace is just hard shadow. Okay. So I'm going to render that out, and first thing I'm going to do is, so you can see the shadows, is put on the default material, so you can see where the shadows are pointing, if there are any. Okay, so now you see it's just a line, and that looks pretty basic, so I'm just going to move the light over, if I can select that, I need it. I'm just gonna move that, give it more of an angle so it doesn't look so dull. And see how that looks. Okay, so that's basically all you're gonna get. And now you can see this isn't illuminated very well. And I'm just gonna show you the. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm back. And sorry about that, and I forget where I was. Oh, so now you see that we, our light here is a bit dark, but you don't. And if you want that brightened up, go back to lights, and I'm going to use the top view, find my text, and click Omni, plant that in right there. And now you see it's nice and bright, and I don't actually want it that bright. And I'm going to go to intensity, and put it wherever I want it. I'm going to move it back a bit. Yeah. If you move it back, it'll just make it more even. And don't turn shadows on because that'll make it look unrealistic. This basically just makes it a more even light. As you can see, it looks nice. So I'm going to add the material back. And the next step is to go to Rendering Environment. 
click environment and map and click bitmap and go to wherever your scene is so documents uh, let me just find mine and click the first image click sequence click open and yes okay exit and now when you render you will get your scene included and this is basically a, a preview and now you see the shadows are right on it and you get the light and it looks sexy so it's turning you on the pink compared to the blue it's like contrast the butthole and if we go to the first frame you can see the first frame and just evaluate if it looks good or not and as you can see it looks like it's pretty much on the floor it is materials and that is our final step actually so um, I'm just going to do a simple metal or actually phone uh, and I'll do metal uh, metal material gives them shine shine to Okay, and change the color. I'll make it uh, Nerus is blue, so I'll go to this blue and drag that down, and that looks good. And I'll see how that looks on our text in the render scene. And it looks a little dark, as you can see. It looks fake, very fake, but. This is just showing you, you can worry about, I'm not going to worry about showing you how to make it look realistic because that is not what this tutorial is for. I'm going to see how that looks. Fong's like a shiny plastic, I guess. Okay, I like that. That looks sexy. And you can see a white spot on the C, so I'm going to move that Omnilent back a lot. Okay, well, Mr. Omni, I'm going to move you over. And I'm going to turn the bright intensity down a bit and check that render. And I hope that looks good. And yep, and there's a little bit on the K. And I'm just going to move that up actually. If I move it up, that should work as well. Just move that and see. So I'm moving. So I just want an even light no matter where the light is. Alright. Okay, I gotta go. I'll see you guys later. So we're gonna click render setup. Okay. I'm just gonna make this a little bigger. Just in the view. Alright. So uh, click active time segment and now area to render. View. Make sure you're selected on this view. Output size, HDTV video, very bottom. And if you want it 1080p, go ahead. But remember, Halo 3 source footage is 1280 by 720, so I'm going to click that. And I'm pretty sure you can leave all this below. And scroll down. To go to rendering environment and uncheck use map and make sure the color is black. Let's make sure it's transparent. So I will show you, I'm going to make sure it's not saved, and I'll show you a single frame now. And you're not going to see the actual shadow itself, but I'll show you. This is what you want it to look like. When it's rendering, this is what you want it to look like. So it's transparent, and it goes in scene, and use black as the environment. So, back to the render setup. Uh, back where were we? And click save file, files, tutorial, and new folder, the text, and enter. And now you're in it. I'm going to name it um, track, because that's what I named it it's called. And save as type PNG. This is the, the, either the best or one of the best formats to sequence. And you can't actually select it, it's automatically saved as a sequence. Whatever, so click save.
and this will be a PNG sequence and you'll get this little pop up. Don't interlace it, that basically compresses PNG. This is uncompressed. Keep alpha channel checked, keep RGB 48 bit checked, unless you want grayscale, but you can do that in After Effects. So click OK. And active type semic and save. And now you can render it out. And this is part two out of three. Thank you for watching. Make sure you finish it off with part three. Bye.